every time you ride your bike, there's always a possibility that you will have a crash. When you crash your bike, it becomes very expensive very quickly. There are three common ways that you will crash. The first is head on, typically when a car pulls out in front of you. Second is low side, third is high side. When you hit head on, if you bend the frame, which is very common in this situation, if you hit with any speed at all, you're gonna write the frame off. And that's it for the bike, basically. It's cheaper to sell the bike for parts and buy a new bike than to try and repair it. And there's no way to protect your bike from it. Now, low side is when the bike slides out from under you. Now, this is a situation which is salvageable for the bike in most cases, but it's very, very expensive. So what happens on a low side is the bike's gonna go out from underneath you. And the first thing that's gonna hit is gonna be the handlebars. Don't forget the bike's still moving forward at this point in most cases. So it'll go down and the handlebars will hit. As the handlebars hit, the bike's still going forward, they'll push backwards, and that's your situation for a low side. So the first place that's gonna take damage is gonna be your handlebars. What you'll get is you'll get scraping on whatever handlebar ends that you've got. You'll rip the rubber here, and the other thing that's most likely to happen is that you will break or damage the clutch lever if you're coming down on this side. This is where folding levers help because as the bike goes down, they fold up the way and they just get a bit scratched up, but they're still usable. Because I'm using a shorty lever, I'm not really at risk for this one. What will also tend to happen if you hit hard enough is that the handlebars themselves will bend back. And not only will they bend back, they will also take out this whole mounting system here which includes this top piece and the entire clamp that holds the, east, the actual TFT on. So this here, this will all be pulled back. As this handlebar comes backwards, it will bend this up. So that's your first expense, is new handlebar, new clamp, uh, new TFT mount, new handlebar grips, new mar ends possibly, clutch lever. And that's just the start, because that's just the handlebars. On the front here, what can happen is you will get gravel rash across the bottom of your stanchion here. And if that happens, often it will mean uh, a new fork stanchion at the very least. Very often it will damage things further up the fork as well, so you may need a complete new fork leg. This is the reason why I fit a little protector here. The power part ones are much shorter. They do work to a degree, but I like these slightly longer ones from Bagros Performance. It gives just that little bit more push to clear things for the bike. I've got a power parts cage fitted here because I have slid the bike without it and I know the damage it's caused. The first thing that will hit the ground here is the actual side of the engine casing here. So. If you wear through that, you will potentially lose oil, not so much from here, but certainly it will cause you to replace the entire cover at the minimum. So either the cage like this, or the power parts guides, guards, or one of the other protectors you can get will help prevent that grinding through. I do like these for the protection they use, and because my stuff is stunt oriented, it's a little more heavy duty, so I like this. But if you've got a road bike, you might have different options. I'm gonna try and make another video for road bike oriented protection, but I'm waiting to try and get hold of some parts before I can do that. After this is worn away, the next thing to hit the ground will be your gear lever, and that will get written off. If you're lucky, the foot peg will simply slide out of the way and you'll simply get like I have here, grinding damage across there. If you're unlucky, it'll snap the foot peg off. So that's another item for replacement. So let's move a little higher up the bike because this entire side of the bike is now sliding down the road. The next thing that hits the, the road is this cover here. So that will be written off once 
that's hit, then it takes out the radiator. So you'll be adding a new radiator to the list of things to buy. It will then take out this side panel here. So this will need replacing and the inside part. My tank has a dent in it here from so doing. So you will probably get a dented tank and possibly need a new one. And as you get to the back of the bike, then you'll need a new side cover here because this will be written off and the chances are you'll get the seat as well. Plus you may have damage further down on the bike to the rear swinging arm. So when you low side, basically the entire side of your bike hits the cheese grater of the road. So it will take out this, it'll take out this, it can take out your tank, your seat, your real side pod, the bottom case of the engine, the gear lever, foot peg, and it may also take out some of the stuff back here, which is one of the reasons why I still have this little cotton reel here. But for me, in terms of protection, you can see I have stronger handlebars, I have the little stump foot peg on the front wheel, which keeps the fork away, and together with the power parts cage and this rear stunt protection here, it keeps all of this protected. And you can see there's quite a lot of scrapage down here and I've dropped this on its side a number of times. I've scraped this, I've scraped this, I've scraped that and this, but these are replaceable. So there's no issue there and I've not had any damage so far, fingers crossed, to any of this part of the bike. And this, as I say, is quite expensive to replace. I know, because I have done it. My build here is stunt oriented, which is why I've made the choices I have. Most stunt guys, pure stunt guys, will go for a specialist stunt cage. They're great if you're just stunting, but in my mind, they're a little bit ugly in terms of a road bike build. Although this does look a bit like a stunt rear cage, it also is nicely designed. It's not just tubes welded up and painted a garish color. It's nicely designed. It looks like thought's gone into it and you could easily mistake it just for rear foot pegs, which is what they double function as. Overall, this gives me a nice road build look while giving me the ability to do some minor stunts on the bike and not worry when I drop it, and I do. So this can all get all scraped up, not a problem, fairly easy and cheap to replace. Buying the bits is not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than rebuilding the entire side of your bike. When you punch that radiator into the ground, it will cause further damage. So let's swap to the other side of the bike. The radiator is mounted to this engine mount here. This is a cast alloy point. When you punch that radiator this way, which is what happens when it hits the ground, this mount will snap this engine mount. So add that to the list of parts you need to buy. Having done all that expense, that's why I now protect my bikes, because it's cheaper, even for a pure road build. As I say, I will come back to a road build as soon as I'm able to source the parts I need to finish it off. But on this side, we see the same. If you drop it on this side, again, you've got forks, radiator, engine covers, tank, and so forth, all the way back. And I've got the same protection here, here, here and here. Now the one extra thing you've got on this side of course is the exhaust. Now I've got the Akrapovich exhaust here but what you'll notice is that I've got this strapped to the side of it which is a, an exhaust protector and if you can see it's scraped. If that wasn't there I would have been scraping this very expensive slip-on exhaust. I have also seen people who push this bike, say on a track and stuff, who actually will scrape this when cornering. So it's worthwhile investing in something like this to actually protect uh, the exhaust. And again, I've dropped this bike a lot, but much less on this side, but even so, this is something I would recommend. The final way of crushing this bike is high siding. High siding is more rare than low siding, but 
the results are much more catastrophic for the rider. The end result for the bike is pretty much the same as it is for the low side because it will then end up smacking you into the deck and sliding down the road or the track on its side. So you'll end up with a very similar pattern of damage. In summary, in stock form, if you low side or high side, you're gonna create a lot of damage to the bike and it's gonna be very expensive to fix. Certainly replacing things like handlebars, fork leg, tank, cover, seat, side pod, engine case, lever, potentially foot peg, exhaust, and so forth. It's a lot of damage. Really, it's cheaper to add protection to your bike beforehand, and that's what I really recommend. So, in terms of stunt cage type protection, we are looking at folding lever, some sort of protection for the handlebars, or even a better handlebar, a strong handlebar, some sort of uh, slider on the front fork, I would highly recommend. And I would definitely recommend something like the power parts cage or some form of engine case protectors. Bear in mind, if you're just running engine case protectors, you will likely have to replace them after a crash and they're not cheap. Plus you will still take out things like this. This is where I also like this particular design of rear cage because it looks okay on a road bike it fits really well plus some sort of protection for your exhaust so it's not a big shopping list of things to buy really i would heavily recommend everything i've got fitted to my bike because i have crashed this bike a lot of times and it survived really well Aside from that very first crash where it slid down the road and wiped out the entire side of the bike, that was expensive to repair. Since I've added this crash protection, this bike has slid down the road a number of times and I've not had to pay out for anything. Sooner or later, I'm gonna to have to replace these plastic sliders that go on the end of these stump peg. At this point, what you're really looking at is cost minimization. A Little bit of investment in your bike will save you dividends when or if you crash the bike. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys again soon.